Kim, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy to continue with our teaching um, from part one about the life of Christ. And I believe that we as a child of God, as a disciple will be blessed and you will know the truth of what Christ is saying. Let me pick up from part one on what the Lord Jesus Christ has taught us in John chapter 14. Jesus said in verse 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works than these he will do because I go to my father now he who believe in Christ he will also do the very work of Christ but on a greater measure what does he mean greater works mean greater in quantity, greater in eminence, you know, just like Elisha the prophet, when his spiritual father, prophet Elijah, asked him, what do you want before I go? And prophet Elisha said, father, my father, Give me a double portion. A double portion. Mean he is. He want to do greater works than what. Elijah the prophet did. In the life of the prophet Elijah. It is written. And it is mentioned. That he did. About seven supernatural miracles seven but in the life of prophet Elisha it was double 14 miracles now I'm not talking about normal kind of healings I'm talking about supernatural miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit that is walking through your life now for 33 in the half years, the Lord Jesus Christ, in his three and a half years of ministry, preaching the gospel of salvation and giving a strong me message of repentance, repent, and also he was anointed by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit, to go about to do good works, healings, raising the dead, walking on water, changing water to wine, commanding the storm to be calm, you know, and casting out demons and evil spirit. According to the observation for three and a half years, Jesus did about 37 miracles. Now, I'm not talking about a normal work. I'm talking about raising the dead, like Lazarus. I'm talking about multiplying five loaves and two fish 
to feed the 5,000 people. I'm talking about the miracle of how Jesus walked on the water, which is scientifically and logically normal man cannot do that. It's not magic. But he walked under the power of God and a total of 37 miracles. 37 wonder supernatural works. So when Jesus said, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater mean it might be double. If he has preached to 5,000 people, God is going to use the servant of God to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, maybe 10,000, even 100,000 people because of the knowledge and through um, online, through many platforms, social media, social platform. You can reach out the world just like what you are looking at me now. I am here preaching in my room, in my office, but the whole world can watch me as I teach. This is the good works. This is the, the greater works that we are doing. But all for one, one purpose, to do the work that Christ have authorized and mandated us to do. To preach the gospel, the good news, to teach and to make the disciples of all nations as a disciple of Christ. And to deliver the people, to pray for the sick, to lay hands on the sick. So that the Holy Spirit can also use my life. That is my prayer. As an extension of God's hand to lay hand on you when you are sick or to cast out demons in the name of Jesus Christ. To show, to manifest that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That He is a Savior. That He is the Lord. He is a king. He is a baptizer of the Holy Ghost of God. And that he is still manifesting by the Spirit of Christ through our life as his servant. It is my joy I preach pure gospel. I preach nothing more than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you have not received him as a savior, if you have not repented, then that this is the time an opportunity to you to call upon the Lord to save and deliver you from the sinful life and change and transform your life to be a follower of Christ, but a life that is righteous in reverent fear and to know who our God is. Amen. Greater works because I'm going to the Father. Verse 13 say, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Again here, Jesus is talking about asking. Verse 13, Jesus is talking about praying. Intercessory prayer and you ask. He said, whatever you ask. Who to us? The Father in heaven. Remember in part one, I said that when you pray, you pray our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Father in heaven. Abba Father in heaven. You have a Father. Your Creator. And we as His children. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, He who receive and accept Christ is given authority to become a child of God. You read it. So we have God who is our Father. So when you pray, I encourage you to ask the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. That is what he said. Whatever you ask in my name, in the name of Jesus Christ, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. That through Christ, 
the name of God the Father will be lifted up. Amen. Verse 14, if you ask anything in my name, that means you must be wise to ask something that in accordance to the things of God, something good, you may ask. When you are in trouble, you ask for help. When you are lack, in lack, you ask God to help you. Father, I need to be blessed. Father, I pray in my 40 years of ministry, whenever I am in need, I am in lack, where human cannot help, cannot understand, I, need, I come to God, my Father, and I said, Father, I ask of you in the name of Jesus, help me to come out from this situation. Father, give me wisdom. Through your Holy Spirit to be able to resolve this issue. And you know what? God always answer the prayer of those who are sincerely required. Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love Christ, you know, people can say, I love you. But action does not show you love. Amen. So, love Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, and all that. Jesus said, yes. Jesus said, yeah, keep my commandments. That is why you need to read the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because with these four books, it testify about the work of Christ, but also Christ's teaching and commandment. How to know his commandments? Read his teaching. Observe. And keep my commandment. Mean keep it. Don't lose it. Obey. Because when you keep his commandment, there is life in it. There is truth in it. There is deliverance in it. There is a transformation in your life. When I read. And follow the path. Of Christ. And his life. My life. Has been tremendously. Transformed. Changed and blessed by God. Amen. Now come to verse 16. Jesus said here. And I will pray the father. And. He will give you. You see, when he pray, he also pray, Father. He never said, God. Well, maybe. Sometimes he say, God. But he look at this relationship in his human nature. He look at God as his Father. Very personal. So, he also prayed. He said, I will pray the Father. New King James. I will pray the Father. How come a lot of Christians and many of them thought to pray to Jesus, to pray to Peter, to pray to Mary, to pray to God? You know? There are many God, But there is only one Father. I don't know, but I don't find any belief or religion calling God the creator as a father except Christian. And this is what Jesus said. I will pray the father. He didn't say I will pray to God. He said I will pray the father. I will ask my father. So the same thing with us. We are his child. Jesus is the only begotten son of the father. So he said, as a son, I pray to the Father. I will pray to the Father. Can you follow Jesus to pray like he prayed? He prayed, I will pray, I will ask the Father. And he, mean the Father, will give you, mean me, another helper. That he may abide with you forever. Verse 17. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him, 
no knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. In the original translation of from 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 Greek, he says that I will pray or ask the Father, He will give you another paraclet, paracletos, from the Greek root word of paracletos or paraclet. Now, English translate it in the King James as helper or counselor. All right? But paraclet means he who is sent. Another person who is sent of the same kind to give help, to comfort, to come alongside with you like following you like a shadow follow you. Helper is one of that meaning. Paraclet also means comforter. Counselor, comforter. Paraclet also means the helper, the intercessor, the one who intercedes on our behalf. Paraclet also interpreted as advocates on behalf, the middleman. When someone accused, especially demons accused or people accused, he is there on your behalf to advocate you. Paraclets also mean strengthener, that strengthen our inner being, our life. Paraclets also mean the standby. When we fall down, he is there to stand by, to assist, to help you, to comfort you, to give advice, to speak to you. Now, who is this paraclet? And he may abide with you forever because That is the promise of Jesus Christ. That is a profess, prophetic utterance of the Old Testament and New Testament that a new spirit, a new spirit in the New Testament, I will put in your spirit. I will write the law in your, the tablets of your heart. I will make the body, your body as a temple and living temple of God where the spirit of God the Father, the spirit of Christ, The Holy Spirit will abide in our body to strengthen us, to inspire us, to speak to us so that it is known that God with us, the Spirit of His Son that adopt us to become the spiritual child of God. Amen? And He said, He may abide with you forever. Until you blaspheme in and you are no more interested in God, you backslide, you go away, you run away from God until you don't want, you reject God, then you are blaspheming against the Spirit of God. Then that's the time when He will leave you. But until then, He wants to abide with you. Because He is the one that will impart Zoe, life of God in our life. You know, This month, June 2024, will be my birthday month. I'm, I am 59 years. And my strength, if you ask me, what is your spiritual strength that enable you to walk in the path of faith in Christ? I say the Holy Spirit of God. Because He's the Spirit of truth. He is my comforter, My counselor that counsel me, my helper to help me when nobody or no man can help. He is the advocate, my lawyer. He is my paraclets, paracletos to strengthen me when I'm weak and stand by to assist me to stand up again. He is the spirit of truth that lead me into all truth. You can see In verse 17, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, you know, mean the system of this world, this cosmos world, the people of the world. It is very, very hard for them to receive the spirit of truth. Why? Because 
The mentality of human being is they have to see before they believe. And the logic says, the logic, understanding, and education cannot convince them to accept something that they cannot see. They want to see us, and then they believe. But the Spirit of God is a spirit, the spirit of truth. Now, don't get me wrong. There are many interpretations saying that what Jesus is saying that this person is coming, the comforter, and he will name some prophet or some somebody. No. Spirit of truth in verse 17 means it is a spirit being. You cannot see this being with your physical eyes. This is a spirit. He, 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 he said in 17, the spirit, you know, ruach, that's a Hebrew translation. The Greek, ruach, mean like the air. The closest, the closest interpretation is like the air. You know, the wind, the air, wind. The wind blows. You on the fan, you feel the, 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 the wind, the coldness of the wind. But you cannot see the wind because it is a spirit kind of substance. You know what I mean? Spiritual realm. You cannot see. So when it is a spirit, like angels and evil spirit and demons, they are spirit being. That's why you cannot see angel with your physical eyes unless he manifests himself. You cannot see evil spirit and demons unless he possess somebody and manifests himself. Because these are the spirit. And in John chapter 4 verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit. He who worship him must worship him in the spirit. And we are a spirit being also. Who possess a body. Who has an intelligence or soul. So we are tripart. We are also being created like a trinity. We, have a, we are a spirit person with a body, with this physical body, and we have a soul, which is our intelligence. Our body will die maybe 100 years, but your spirit is alive with your soul because you are a spirit being just like the creator, God, who is a spirit. Till the day when God of Father with the Son and the Holy Spirit, Christ became man. And you can see the image of who God is in Christ. So, this is truly a revelation. This Spirit or the Holy Spirit, whoever wants to interpret this Bible, you must know that Jesus is referring that when I pray the Father, He will give you another helper. He is talking about a person that you cannot see with your physical eyes. This is not an angel, but this is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit. The Comforter, the Helper. And here in verse 17, He said the Spirit of Truth. Because there are many faults over there. But when the spirit of truth. It is not uh, a noun name. No. Because the Holy Spirit don't have a name. He is not John or Matthew. No, no, no. He is just a spirit. But is a common general. It's not a personal noun. He can be the spirit of God. The spirit of the Father, the spirit of Christ, you know, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit is the same person he's referring. And Jesus is preparing his disciple that, look, I'm going to the Father, which was fulfilled almost 2,000 years ago. On 40th days after his resurrection, he went up to heaven. But on the 50th day, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, you can see the Holy Spirit being poured out. As he already prayed. When did he pray? We don't know. Maybe before he went to the cross. He prayed. But he prayed. Maybe he was in Gethsemane. 
when he was in a mountain and praying, but he testified that I have prayed. I prayed. And because Jesus is the one who prayed to the Father, his prayer was answered. And he requests maybe something like, Father, I pray that you will give Peter, James, John your spirit. Because I know that he cannot live without the Holy Spirit, without the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. Just like you have given me your Holy Spirit and anointed me with your Holy Spirit. I pray that this is a request. But he did pray. He said, I will pray. And God has answered the prayer of Christ. Which is on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit come like a mighty wind, like a tongue of fire. We call it Pentecost experiences. And came upon the disciples and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in unknown tongue. Amen. You can find it in Acts chapter 2. But here he said, it is the Spirit. So the interpretation, it is not a man. It is not with a name. It is not a prophet. But he said, it is the Spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. That means people who is not a child of God, who is not a follower of Christ, cannot receive. Cannot receive. That is what he said. They will not be able to receive the Holy Spirit without Christ Jesus in their life. Without becoming a believer. Without becoming a disciple. Impossible. This is not inherited by Roman Catholic Church, Evangelical Church, Anglican Church. This is not inherited. This is a personal thing between you and God the Father. That if you say, Lord, I need your Holy Spirit. Well, repent first. Believe in Christ. Be baptized. Change your life for the better. Acknowledge Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then you are qualified to be a child of God to receive the Holy Spirit. The world cannot receive. I mean, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, is exclusively for the believers. The world cannot receive. Only a believer can receive. Because it neither sees him, you see. The world cannot see. Or even knows him. Because if they know Jesus, then they will know who the Spirit is. Is because it is the same spirit that being with Christ ever since he was birthed. But you know him, for he dwells with you. Now you can see. He dwells. He wants to stay. He wants to you know, abode in, in our life. To make us as his house, as his temple. Apostle Paul explained better. He said, do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? That is the plan of God. Not the building. It's temporary. No, we have a wonderful cathedral. Where God is there. When Ecclesia, the people of God, gather together in the name of Jesus. But if the people are not there, it's just a building, a church name. You know? Because in this New Testament, Christ wanted, God the Father wanted, and the desire of God, the Holy Spirit, is to be with us, to dwell, to, and will be in you, not outside of you, will be in you, to be filled. Even at, I remember in Acts chapter 19, Paul asked the people, or the believer in Ephesian church, he said, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? You know, there are many who claim to be a Christian by birth, but they never receive the Holy Spirit. And what is the proof that the Spirit which you cannot see is in you? Because you receive the sacrament from, from your church? No. Because the Holy Spirit is God, the person. I knew the day when I had prayed and cried, Lord, Father God, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. You know, John the Baptist say, I baptize you with water for repentance. But Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I said, Jesus baptized me with the Holy Spirit. I was like 17 years old. I was 18 years old. I knew the day 
when the Holy Spirit came upon me, entered into my life, and I knew him as the blessed comforter. Paraclets, I will teach you more about it. He is a spirit of Christ. Verse 18. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. He will be crucified. You know. But you will see me because I live. You will also live. 20. On that day you will know that I am in my father. And you are in me. And I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my father. Oh, the father love. And I will love him and show myself, manifest myself to him. The father in the Old Testament manifested in the New Testament who Jesus is. He came in the name of the father. But in this Dispensation of grace. The Holy Spirit 2,000 years, years ago is still here on earth today. The Spirit of Christ come to manifest, to show and glorify Jesus, but he walks through us because he's a spirit. That is why every night I pray, Father, use my life as an extension, as your vessel to manifest your spirit. That I might preach Jesus, I might teach Jesus of Nazareth. That through my life, your works will continue through Christ. Because I live with Christ. And in him only, I want to live. Thank you. So, this is the continuation of what I say, I will continue again in part three, but my point here is that it is the prayer of Jesus. When you ask the Father to give the Holy Spirit, to baptize you, he will give it to you because Jesus already prayed for you. I will pray the Father. He will give you. Surely will give you. But then, is there a qualification? And I said, Criteria. Well, you repent. Have you repented from your sin? Have you changed your ways? Have you regretted with your wrongdoing and humbled? And then you stop and change your life and begin to embrace the mind of God, begin to embrace the attitudes of God, Begin to follow and be a lifestyle like Christ do. A believer means you only have one faith, not two, be two believe, three believe in other gods, but only the God of a Christian. Believe in Christ. Many people, like I said in part one, they believe in Jesus. They said prophet. They believe. Even the demons believe. You know that? But they never worship Christ and they never want to follow the teaching of Christ. And where can you find the teaching of Christ and his commandment? The angel, the Bible. There is no other book that really precisely, accurately tells you about Christ. You can believe Christ. Other religion believe Jesus Christ. But only the disciple of Jesus, a follower of Jesus, is the one who show proof that he believe in Christ. You know? I, I have many friends say, I believe in Christ. I believe. Yes, I believe. Even the demons believe. But does the demon follow the commandment of Jesus? You know? No. So believe in Christ means you will love him and put only your faith to him and follow his teaching. And one of his teachings is pray to the Father. This is one of his teachings. You be born again. 
Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent is change your mindset, change your mentality for the better. That embrace the mindset of God, the mentality, the lifestyle, the attitudes of God, the character of God. Be like Christ. That is a life of repentance. And when you do that, your life will be in the truth. And who will help you? The Holy Spirit is coming to help you. Speaking to you. Giving vision and dreams. Inspiring you. Oh, hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you understand. This is the era. This is the moment. This is the time of the Holy Spirit of truth to come to you. I pray, Father, that everyone who hear my word we receive the spirit of truth to guide them in the truth. And all the spirit of false and error and religious error be exposed. And let the spirit of revelation come upon us. In Jesus' name of Nazareth. In the name of Christ of Nazareth. I pray. Amen. Till we meet again, I will continue with part 3. John chapter 14 verse 25. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Thank you.